Yeah. Once you start recording, then I will admit them. Mm, you are recording already, I think. But that will give me any indication it's recording, man. But I check here it's recording. Oh, you are recording already, also. Is it recording already, or? Uh, I'm not sure that on your side. I I know my side here. I can see myself recording. Okay. On your side, I'm not sure. I I press recording already. Then it says it's recording. Oh, then this recording already. Okay, lah. Then I start, lah. Mm. Okay.
In today's business landscape, customers demand the highest standards, and companies that fail to meet those standards risk falling behind and losing business. Welcome to Nexus Consultancy. We have dedicated over 15 years in helping businesses to implement ISO management systems for improved quality, compliance, operational excellence, and customer satisfaction. Our company's purpose is simple, which is to empower business and people. Our team of experts work closely with our customers to access their needs and create customized solutions that meet their specific requirements. We conduct thorough audits and evaluations to identify areas for improvement and help our customers implement changes that drive success. Our consultants have extensive experience and serve over 2,000 customers and we stay up to date with the latest industry trends and best practices. Whether you are a small business just starting out or a large corporation looking to improve your operations, Nexus Consultancy is here to help you optimize your operations, increase profits and achieve your business goals. Hi, good afternoon and good day, everyone. Welcome to our monthly webinar series. I'm Darren here, and I would be the speaker for today. Our topic for today would be covering, that we will be, we will be covering, it's uh, establishing an environmental health and safety management system. Start your ESG journey. Now, before we start, I just like to do a quick sound and uh, video check. If you can hear and see me, Kindly just help me put one into the chat box so that I know that I'm not talking to myself here. If you can hear and see me, just, just do this quickly. Help me put a one into the chat box. Yes, that, that's great. That's great. Thank you very much for your feedback. And uh, I will encourage everyone, if you have any question, just uh, feel free to type into the chat box. We would address the, your, your questions at the end of the session, at the Q&A session later. All right, let's, now, be, before we go into the topic itself uh, of the establishing an environmental health and safety management system, I'd just like to ask you, what would you like to achieve in this session today? What would you like to achieve in this session today? Is it, number one, to, to learn more about how to establish the environmental health and safety management system, to start your ESG journey? Um, you have heard of ESG and you want to know how an environmental health and safety management system can help you in this journey. You can uh, that's one or two, uh, learn more about how to establish an environmental health and safety management system, not really for the purpose of ESG, but uh, just want to know more about, about how to establish an environmental health and safety management system, or is it three to fulfill customer requirements? Um, you may have customers requiring you to provide uh, uh, evidence about environmental health and safety management system or customer requiring you to do ESG. Uh, could it be three? Uh, fulfill customer requirements. So what is your objective for today? Uh, which one is applicable to you? Would it be one, two, or three? So do type your answer into the chat box. Is it one, two, or three? What would you like to achieve? Uh, today, or if you have other intention or other things that you would like to achieve, do feel free to share with us as well into the chat box. Right, all uh, one and three. What about the rest? So what would you like to achieve in this session today? Yeah, I see some. I see two. Okay, all. All right. Okay, so. Yeah, I hope the session will be able to help you achieve your intended objective. So let's 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 go in. Okay, let's let's take a quick look about uh, ESG. Okay, or environmental, social, and governance. Okay, what is to, to begin? What is environmental, social, and governance? Uh, ESG. It refers to the three key criteria 
used to evaluate the sustainability and ethical impact of an organization, impact to the stakeholders, including how it manages resources, people, uh, leadership practices, and to generate long-term value. ESG is best characterized as the framework that helps stakeholders understand how an organization is managing its risks and opportunities related to environmental, social, and governance. While, while the term ESG is often used in the context of investing, now stakeholders include not just investors. Okay, you have to expand it to customers, suppliers, and employees. All of them are increasingly interested in how sustainable an organization operations are. It is, it is evident that the ESG practices can be turned into a competitive advantage to create long-term value and unlock new business opportunities or unlock new business potentials for companies to innovate and grow. Top five benefits identified by companies that adopt ESG were number one, top five benefits. Number one benefit, increased awareness among customers. Number two, cost savings. Number three, improved profits. Number four, better risk management. Number five, increased revenue. So having ESG measures and policies in place not only help to attract new customers and top talents, okay, it also helps the company to enhance profits and reputation while decreasing its carbon footprint. Now, let us have a quick look at some common criteria of ESG. I, I say common criteria because there are a growing number of ESG frameworks and guidelines, all of which have evolved to improve transparency and consistency of our ESG information or ESG reporting that companies are, are providing. Now, we will see that environmental health and safety criteria are addressed in these standards and frameworks and how establishing an environmental health and safety management system can actually help you to start your ESG journey. Let's take a look at environment. Environmental criteria refer to an organization's environmental impacts and environmental risks created by their business activities that may have actual or potential negative impacts on the, on the air, on the land, water, ecosystem, and human health. Okay, and how this organization is managing those risks. So this would include waste generation. Uh, waste generation, the waste that a company generates, uh, also including schedule waste. In, in Malaysia, we focus about schedule waste. Um, I'm sure you have heard about schedule waste. What is schedule waste? Schedule waste are toxic waste. Um, example, if your company is using, let's say, chemicals, upon, upon finishing up the chemical, then you are left with a chemical container. So this chemical container is actually a schedule waste, and how do you manage this schedule waste? So environmental, okay, common environmental uh, criteria looks into uh, how you manage waste, how much waste are you generating, are you disposing? Are, are, are these ways polluting the environment or not? So talking about, talking about pollution, okay, uh, if, if this is your company, if this is your company, okay, uh, just now we are talking about waste, you may be disposing waste, or your company may be, okay, discharging water, your company may be emitting uh, smoke air emissions, or your company may be generating noise, into the environment. So these are the potential pollution that may occur. So, uh, air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, or land pollution. So it looks into that. Greenhouse gases, uh, greenhouse gases of climate change, greenhouse gases are those gases that trap heat in the atmosphere. Example of greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, CFC. Uh, where do they come from? Uh, example, carbon dioxide, okay, it's through burning of, uh, of fossil fuel, burning of petrol, burning of diesels, uh, burning of uh, waste, burning of trees or other biological matters. Uh, and you may have also heard of the term um, net zero carbon emission. Uh, net zero carbon emission, it's a, it's a situation where global greenhouse gases emission 
uh, uh, those that you emit out are balanced with the uh, emission reduction. Uh, and, and that zero meaning carbon emissions generated are equal to the carbon removed. So Malaysia is committed to reach net zero emissions by year 2050. So greenhouse gas reporting would be a norm uh, in the future. Energy usage, consumption of uh, non-renewable energy shall be optimized, they shall be monitored uh, by establishing baseline values and trends shall be observed within the appropriate time frame. The trends see whether you are in you are increasing your energy usage or you are decreasing your energy usage. Compliance to legal requirements, environmental legal requirements, uh, this, this will need to be to, to be looked into, to be managed. Example of environmental legal requirements are Environmental Quality Act, schedule based regulations, industrial effluent regulations, sewage regulations. Uh, those are um, legal environmental legal requirements. Common, these are common environmental criteria. Social, social is a social pillar which refers to an organization relationship with the stakeholders, looking to how the organization treats its people. Example of factors that a firm may be measured against would include human rights. Uh, businesses should have human rights policy covering human rights issues. Example of human rights, right, human rights issues, um, no physical or verbal abuse, no sexual or other harassment, no discrimination, uh, no forms of intimidation, uh, all this must be prohibited. So should a human rights be violated, uh, there should be a transparent and well-communicated system in place to enable the workforce or the stakeholders, like stakeholders, example, suppliers, the community, contractors, to report to the company their grievances. Common social criteria looks into our labor standards. Labor standards offer protection to both uh, the workers and the employer, ensuring, uh, example, ensuring workers receiving their fair pay and compensation, uh, ensuring job security, regulate the break time, the working hours, promoting uh, better working conditions, conditions, reducing conflicts and more. So employers gain productivity and profits from secure, healthy and happy workers. One main area in the, the, the social uh, part would be health and safety. The health and safety working environment shall be provided to the workers. Uh, this that the hazards and risks of all operations shall be accessed. Adequate steps shall be taken to prevent injury and ill health from occurring at the workplace by eliminating and reducing the hazards as much as possible. Or the hazards, the cause of the hazards or the risks at the workplace. Another common criteria in, in, in the social part will be community relations. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the opportunity for the company and its workforce and its people to determine what benefits they can bring to the local uh, community. An example, contributions to local hospitals or schools, or community centers, um, sports programs, uh, transportation facilities, um, transportations to, to, to see doctors or to the markets, to the, to the shops. So it, it's, it's about how you can contribute to the local community. That's that common uh, social criteria. Governance, the governance part refers to how an organization is led and managed and what types of internal controls exist to promote transparency and accountability by its leaders. How companies will be governed, okay, focuses on, for example, um, business ethics. You now businesses shall conduct their uh, operations ethically, without bribery, without corruption, or so any other type of fraudulent business practices. Anti-bribery, establish a communicate anti-bribery policy, or uh, what you should do if you come across bribery cases. How do you report the bribery? Uh, who do you report to? Or if is there a whistleblowing procedure? And if you, re and if you receive a, a report, then uh, what would you do with it? So how do you investigate? 
Other governance criteria include uh, business continuity or risk management, includes uh, diversity, board diversity, um, company diversity, the structure, example, by, by, by uh, gender, by age, um, accurate and transparent reporting, accurate and transparent accounting reporting. So these are, these are common governance criteria. So, uh, and, and as you can see, ESG, okay, those are the common criteria in, e and in ESG. And you will see that environmental health and safety practices play a crucial role in this ESG reporting, uh, providing numerous benefits. Uh, environmental health and safety can provide numerous benefits to enhance the company's reputation, efficiency, and compliance as well as potentially uh, improve its financial performance. Benefits of environmental health and safety in ESG reporting. Okay, some of the benefits includes um, reduced incidents. Uh, effective environmental health and safety practices can lead to fewer workplace accidents and environmental incidents. Risk management, environmental health and safety data can help organizations identify potential risks uh, before they become a problem, allowing for more proactive approach to risk management. It, it helps in legal compliance, environmental health and safety practices ensure compliance to environmental health and safety reg legal requirements, legal regulations, or uh, reducing the risk of fines, sanctions, or, or other legal actions. It helps to improve your operations, uh, by focusing on efficient use of resources and waste reductions, uh, environmental health and safety can drive operational efficiencies, leading to cost savings. Continuous improvement in the ESH practices often leads to refinement of operational processes, enhancing the overall efficiency of the company. It can help improve public perception it can help you to demonstrate your commitment okay, to environmental health and safety. It improves your brand image and can help you to strengthen your customer loyalty and to gain access to new markets. And of course, it can help boost your employee or your workers' morale. A, health, a healthy and safe working environment boosts employee morale. Okay. Boosting employee morale can lead to increased productivity as well as uh, workers' retention. So these are the benefits of uh, incorporating uh, environmental health and safety into, uh, into your ESG uh, reporting. In, in summary, environmental health and safety is the foundation of the uh, ESG framework because it embodies the practical steps of the day-to-day -day operations that will make the company's environmental and social responsibilities more tangible, more measurable, and more actionable. Uh, it is an integral part in demonstrating corporate responsibility and sustainability, both which are now vital for any business okay, to thrive and to sustain. So after understanding the environmental health and safety part of the ESG framework, and of course the importance of environmental health and safety, let us talk about the uh, environmental health and safety management system or the EHSMS. So what is a EHSMS? An environmental health and safety management system, okay, within the context of the ESG framework, uh, it, it is actually a structured program that integrates policy, processes, uh, procedures, and practices for managing your company's environmental impacts, your company occupational health and safety risks, uh, uh, the legal requirements or the compliance obligations that you need to comply to. Environmental health and safety management system should be designed to ensure that the environment, the health and safety of the workers, the employees, they are being prioritized. They are monitored and they will be continuously improved. So aligning with your broader ESG goals, ESG goals that guide responsible business operations and sustainable practices. ESHMS. How to establish an effective environmental health and safety management system then? 
Well, we have uh, these five key components, okay, for you to establish an effective environmental health and safety management systems. They are the first one, the commitment and policy, commitment and policy development. So establishing companies direction, establishing company values, okay, commitments from the management, commitments from the leaders of the company. Part one, uh, component one. Number two, planning. Okay, uh, identifying environmental and health and safety impacts, identifying the legal requirements, and then plan, plan the necessary actions to address them or to mitigate them or to comply with the legal requirements. Number three, implementation. Uh, to implement the uh, environmental health and safety management system, you need to develop competencies. You need to establish controls. You need to have uh, communication strategies. Okay, you need to implement the system. Upon implementing the system, number four, you need to monitor the performance of the system. You need to conduct monitoring and measurement. You need to conduct audits. Uh, you need to uh, measure your incident. You need to investigate your incidents. Okay, to determine to determine whether the environmental health and safety management systems is effective or not. If not effective, number five, you need to review and improve. Review and continuously improve. Learning and continuously improve the environmental health and safety management system. So five components. Five components to establish an effective environmental health and safety management system. Let's, let us now zoom in into these five components. Starting with the first one, Commitment and policy development. Policy development in, in, in the context of environmental health and safety management is it, critical. It's a critical first step in establishing the company's value, the commitment towards sustainability and employees' well-being. It is the process by which a company articulates its intention, articulates its intention, and set out the principles that will guide the actions in relation to its uh, environmental stewardship, uh, health and workplace safety. Key elements that we need okay, in the uh, commitment and this policy development, key elements that we need would be, first of all, leadership commitment. It starts at the top. So the company's leaders must visibly commit Visibly commit, meaning everyone uh, will be able to see that the management are committed to the environmental health and safety values, showing employees, showing the stakeholders that these issues are taken seriously, okay, at all levels. Number two, uh, developing policy, establishing a documented policy, okay, on the company's direction and commitment towards sustainability and employee well-being. This policy must also affirm the company's commitment to comply with all relevant environmental health and safety legal requirements. The policy shall also provide a framework to outline specific measurable goals that will, uh, that will reflect the company's commitment to continuously improve the environmental health and safety performance. Um, you need responsibility and accountability you need clear lines of environmental health, environmental health and safety responsibility and accountability. So they should be established, ensuring that all employees understand their environmental health and safety roles and responsibilities. So this policy shall be communicated effectively to all stakeholders and the mechanism should be put in place for reporting any concerns that may, have, may arise or any non-compliance. Developing this environmental health and safety policy provides a formalized statement of intent, a formalized statement of intent, a documented intent that serves as a foundation okay, for all subsequent environmental health and safety activities within your organization. So it demonstrates the company's commitment to environmental and social responsibility, which is a, a cornerstone of the good corporate governance. So commitment and policy development. Second component is planning. 
identifying environmental and safety impacts, identifying legal requirements, and then plan the necessary actions or actions that you need to take to address them. So planning, it's, it's crucial okay, in the establishment of the environmental health and safety management system, particularly, particularly where within the framework of the uh, ESG. So this planning stage will involve a thorough process of identifying environmental health and safety impacts associated with the company's operations and understanding the legal requirements. Here's a detailed look of the, uh, into the planning phase. Number one, identify the environmental health and safety impacts. This involves an identifying various aspects of the company activities, products, and services that can interact with the environment. What, 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 in your, what, what is it in your company that can interact with your environment? So uh, is it your emissions? Do you have any emissions? Um, water discharge, air emissions, uh, noise, noise emissions, uh, generation of waste. So anything, anything in, within your company activities that can interact with the environment. Or will uh, any, any of your company's activities that will affect the employee's uh, health and safety. A, a, a example of chemical exposure, example ergonomic, uh, even, even uh, the ergonomic, how you carry out your, your works. Okay. And then evaluate whether all this, uh, all this health and safety impacts and the uh, hazards, okay, whether they have any potential impacts or risks or not. So after identifying aspect and impact, the company needs to uh, assess the risks associated with them. So how, how do we assess risks? I, 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 I believe some of you may have uh, seen this before. Risk, how do we calculate risk? Risk is equal to, risk is equal to uh, likelihood. Very bad handwriting that I have here. And uh, time severity, likelihood time severity, that's, that's risk, that's how we calculate risk. Okay, so identifying environmental aspect, impact, identifying the occupational health and safety hazards, identifying the risk, assessing the risk, okay, how do we assess the risk using this formula, likelihood time severity. Then we will be able to determine, okay, the level of risk, is it uh, low risk, medium risk, or high risk? Okay, so medium or high risk, then we need to come up with actions, okay? We need to come up with actions in order to reduce, mitigate, or even better, eliminate the risk. So it starts with the uh, identification of environmental health and safety impacts. Uh, no, number two, understanding legal and other requirements. Uh, develop a comprehensive list of applicable environmental health and safety legal requirements. Uh, assess current operations against these legal requirements. Identify areas, okay, whether you comply or don't comply. If don't comply, then uh, what would be actions that you will take to comply? So plan those actions. Also establish a process to ensure that your company is staying informed about uh, any changes in the legislation or any emerging regulations to ensure ongoing compliance. An example of environmental and safety legal requirements in Malaysia, uh, for example, Environmental Quality Act, Occupational Health and Safety Act, there are related regulations like the safety, uh, sorry, the schedule wage regulations, uh, the um, use and standards of exposure for chemicals and others to health, like the Occupational Health and uh, Safety and Health Committee regulations. So I, I, if you are aware, for companies with 40 employees and above, well, they need to establish a Safety and Health Committee. And of course, this Safety and Health Committee will need to do a Safety Committee, Safety and Health Committee meeting. Anyone here knows how frequent do we need to do a safety and health committee meeting? How frequent do we need to do a safety and health committee meeting? Anyone? If you know, you may put it into the chat box. 
how frequent do we need to do a safety and health committee meeting? Three months, yep, correct. Uh, correctly, quarterly, yep, I mean quarterly, correct. So that's, uh, that's how frequent we need to do a safety and health committee meeting every quarter. Next would be establishing the environmental health and safety objectives, and then uh, planning to achieve these objectives. So to, to establish objectives, or some companies may call it targets or goals or KPI. Uh, to establish these objectives or targets or goals, I would suggest to first gather data on your current performance. Uh, uh, so related to ESG, for example, your current energy usage, your waste volume, your accident rates, your incident rates, okay, your ill health, number of ill health. Uh, then establish baseline against which future improvement can be measured. So based on these existing data, after, after uh, gathering them, then set clear measurable objectives that align with your company's broader ESG goals. After setting the objectives, then create specific action plan how you will achieve these objectives, including the timeline, including responsibility, who will be responsible, including the resources required. Uh, I would also suggest that you may align establishment of your environmental health and safety objectives to your ESG reporting. Uh, so uh, what would be the common ESG reporting to stakeholders in terms of environmental health and safety? Uh, on the screen here, these are some common measurement criteria uh, that you may see in some of the uh, ESG frameworks. Uh, some of the ESG frameworks okay, would suggest you to report on uh, total waste being generated in your organization. So you can set that as an objective, not more than how many example kilogram or tons of waste that you would generate in a month or in a year. Or you can set objectives for greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it can be measured in tons, not more than how many tons of greenhouse gas emissions per month or per year. Or you can set total energy consumption. Uh, how much energy are you being are you consuming every month or every year? And uh, you may also set objectives okay, to measure the number of work-related facilities or accidents or incidents. So these are some common indicators okay, relating to the environment health and safety that you may also see in some of the ESG frameworks that they uh, suggest you to report. Next, allocate resources. The company should commit necessary resources, including personnel, time, and capital, okay, to effectively implement the environmental health and safety initiatives to achieve the environmental health and safety policy and objectives. So allocate resources, sufficient resources. And lastly, plan for any emergency to respond to any emergency. Develop and maintain plans okay, for responding to any environmental or potential environmental or safety emergencies. So let me ask you, what are example of emergencies that can happen at your workplace? What are the example of emergencies that can happen at your workplace? Anyone? Fire, yeah, that's right, that's right. Fire, fire can be a potential uh, emergency flood, yes, for companies that are exposed or, or has a probability of being exposed to flood, chemical spillage, that's right, that's right, or, or toxic gas releases, okay, or, or any uh, workplace accidents, okay, those are examples of emergencies that can occur at your workplace. So if it occurs, then how do you respond? So come up with a plan for it, how to respond for any potential emergencies. So the planning phase, it's about creating a roadmap 
for environmental health and safety management that integrates with the company's ESG, ESG strategy. So this risk roadmap must be clear, actionable, and capable of adaptation as circumstances within and outside the company change. <clears throat> After planning, uh, then, then comes implementation. After you plan, after you have the plan, after you have the, 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 the policies and procedures, after you have your plan, then comes implementation. So the third component is implementation. To implement an environmental health and safety management system, you need to develop competencies. You need to develop or establish controls, operational controls. You need to have communication strategies in place. The implementation phase, is where the environmental health and safety management system policies and plan are put into action. So it involves three key components, okay? Developing competencies, establishing controls, and formulating uh, communication strategies. So uh, here's how each of these components fits into the implementation process. Developing competencies, uh, implement comprehensive training, for all employees, uh, for all employees tailored to their specific roles and exposure. So different employees have different exposure to risk, different risks. So train them, train them. In, a training will include or should include environmental health and safety policies, should include the procedures, should include the importance of their role within the environmental health and safety management system. Regularly access the competency of the people uh, uh, so if there's any gap, uh, any gap in, in the competency, then provide additional training. So uh, make sure that the team members are competent in managing environmental health and safety issues, uh, competent in understanding the legal obligations, uh, recognizing environmental impact and hazards, uh, competent in responding to incidents. So responding to incidents, so you may also want to provide specialized training for emergency response team. Uh, emergency response team, provide them trainings like our first aid training, firefighting training. Oh, and then those working with highly hazardous substances or providing them trainings on how to handle these uh, highly hazardous substances. So developing competency. Next, establish controls. Design and implement procedures and engineering controls to prevent environmental impact and incidents. Uh, what are example of operational controls? They are, for example, waste, waste segregation system, schedule waste management, chemical management, or even uh, machine guardings, uh, machines with uh, any rotating part uh, needs to be guarded. So those are examples of operational controls. So foster a culture of safety through programs and procedures to encourage safe practices and allow, uh, and, and allow employees or workers to report any unsafe conditions. So you should also have a, a, a system in place on how to report unsafe conditions. Communication, communication divided into in, internal communication, external communication. For internal communication, and, and ensure that there are clear channels for conveying environmental health and safety information within the organization. So this may include regular meetings, bulletins, emails, and uh, or, or for example, using the company intranet to communicate. So you, uh, you should engage with your employees or your workers or your team members okay, in the environmental health and safety process, encouraging them to participate in this environmental health and safety processes. Uh, for example, participating in safety committee, participating in uh, uh, risk assessments or providing feedback on what can be improved. External communication. Develop a strategy for communicating to your external stakeholders, uh, such as uh, external stakeholders, such as uh, contractors, suppliers, uh, local community, even visitors, particularly in the event of an incident. Uh, if incident, if a visitor were to visit your, your, your premise and then there is a fire, what should they do? Also, you should have 
trail protocols for emergency communication. Uh, when uh, emergency like uh, chemical spillage occur, fire occur, then uh, what should they do? Who do notify? Uh, what actions should they take? Uh, should they assemble at the uh, assembly point? Where is the assembly point? So all this should be communicated. So implementing an environmental health and safety management system is a, is a complex process actually that requires coordination between various departments and uh, between the levels of organization. So developing competencies will ensure everyone knows their role in maintaining a, 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 a healthy and safe working environment. Establishing controls can put practical measures in place to manage, to manage these risks. And of course, effective communication strategies will ensure that the policies and procedures are understood and they are being followed. So each of these elements are crucial in the successful implementation of the environmental health and safety management system. After implementing, then comes monitoring. So the fourth component is monitoring. Conduct monitoring and measurements, conduct regular audits, conduct uh, incident investigation to determine whether your environmental health and safety management system is effective or not. The monitoring phase of an environmental health and safety management system is essential in ensuring that the uh, objectives, uh, policy and objectives are being met and the system is effective in reducing uh, risk to the environment and of course to the workplace health and safety. So uh, this phase, a monitoring phase, would typically include monitoring and measurement, set up systems to monitor, monitor things like em environmental emissions, uh, what type of environmental emissions like uh, air quality, noise level, uh, water discharge, uh, set up the uh, monitoring uh, system to measure critical environmental health and safety parameters. Example, whether company comply or not comply to legal requirements, uh, how many number of incidents, how many number of accidents, how many numbers of ill health, uh, etc. Et so monitor and measure, collect data. Conduct regular audits. So establish an audit team and, and uh, regularly schedule to conduct internal audits, internal environmental health and safety audits. So audits should be planned and should cover all areas of the uh, environmental health and safety compliance and performance, I would suggest the company to develop a comprehensive audit checklist that will align with your environmental health and safety policy, objectives, legal requirements, procedures. Conduct the audit to access whether the company practices what your, your, what are your company practicing, comply with the management system or not, comply with the legal requirements or not. So of course, any weaknesses identified shall have corrective actions developed, then set up the time frame, responsibility, uh, assign it to the appropriate personnel to take actions uh, to correct it. What do you think? Uh, may I ask, uh, how frequent do you think uh, we should conduct an internal audit? What do you think? How frequent do you think we should conduct an internal audit? Annually, yep. Hmm. Well, annually, so uh, within a within a planned frequency, annually would be good. So un unless of course uh, there is a big weakness or big gaps that you want to check, then of course you can do it more frequent. Uh, or unless there's any change to the system or any change in your organization, then you may want to do the audit again. Uh, if not, commonly, uh, annually would be okay. Incident investigation. Okay, the next will be incident investigation. Establish clear procedure, okay, for reporting any incident, any environmental and safety incident, uh, including near maze, injuries, illnesses, uh, or spillage, or other environmental and safety events. Okay, uh, response immediately to the incident to manage the situation, example, uh, provide first aid immediately or if necessary, uh, prevent further harm to the uh, worker safety or to the environmental impact. So uh, appoint competent investigation team that can analyze the incident to determine the root cause. Carry out systematic investigation process 
which may involve collecting evidence, interviewing witness, examining the workplace. Develop corrective action plan to prevent this incident from occurring again in future. And of course, uh, this corrective action plan may include any change to procedures, equipment, or may include provision of trainings. Communicate the findings of the investigation and the actions taken to all relevant parties, all relevant parties, example, employees, management, or external stakeholders, uh, so that uh, so that they know okay, the, about the incident, about the implications, okay, and uh, how to prevent it from occurring in the future. So monitoring and, and investigation are vital for accountability and transparency in the environmental health and safety management. And of course, they provide us or they provide you with feedback necessary to drive continuous improvement. So through regular audits and uh, uh, incident investigation, so companies can ensure that they are complying to current regulations, complying to the management system, and also work proactively to reduce risk and uh, enhance, enhance the ESG performance. So during monitoring, if there's any weakness, if the environmental health and safety management system is not effective, or there's, there's, if there's any change to the business, then improve. So the last component is review and improve. Learning and continuously improve the environmental health and safety management system. So review and improvement are foundational principles in the environmental health and safety management system. Uh, it signifies a company's commitment to evolve your practices systematically. So in this, this phase, this component will revolve around learning from past experience, both positive and negative, and make necessary adjustments to enhance the system effectiveness. So how can we do it? Uh, performance review, regularly review the monitoring and measuring results. Remember in the fourth component, monitoring and measurement, so review them, evaluate the performance, identify trends, identify areas for improvement. Conduct management review meeting. Uh, management should review the objectives and policies, uh, findings from audits, review the analyze, uh, review and analyze the data generated uh, from the monitoring activities, uh, review investigation, incident investigation to ensure the management system is effective and aligned to the company's ESG commitments. Continuously improve. So use this insights gained for monitoring activities to make continual improvement to the environment health and safety management system. Develop action plan that outline the steps for making improvement, uh, including updating environmental health and safety management system, including a resource allocation, providing uh, timeline, assigning responsibilities, uh, updating training programs uh, to reflect any changes to the environmental health and safety procedures, policies, or even technologies. So review and continuously improve your environmental health and safety management system. It is not a one-time event, but rather an ongoing process. Okay, that will enable the organization to adapt and evolve the environmental health and safety performance. So by embedding this process into the corporate company culture, uh, organization can ensure that their management system remains dynamic, responsive to change, and uh, continuously enhance its contribution to the company's ESG goal gain. So there you go. Okay, the five components uh, to establish the environment health and safety management system, five components to help you start your ESG journey. So if you have any question, do feel free to type into the chat box. We will answer them into the Q&A session. If you want to know more about how to set up Okay, the environment health and management system, I will recommend referring to this standard as a guideline. Uh, you may refer to the ISO 14001 to set up an environmental management system. Or you may refer to the ISO 45001, which lays down how to set up the occupational health and safety management system. So both of these standards allow for integration, meaning integrating the environmental 
integrating it with the health and safety. So together it becomes a one system around the health and safety management system. So we, you can refer to uh, two of these standards. As we conclude, okay, remember that establishing an environmental health and safety management system that is not just a necessity, but a strategic step towards a sustainable future. So your journey in ESG begins with the commitment to safeguard our environment, to safeguard our planet, to safeguard the well-being of our workers, our people, and everyone that lives on this planet. So uh, that so that will be all of my sharing for today. I hope it has been beneficial to you. So do feel free to ask any questions that you may have as we go into the Q&A session now. So any question that you have, do feel free to ask. Um, just now I noticed Louis was asking about how do we calculate greenhouse gas emission? How do we calculate greenhouse gas emission? Uh, greenhouse gas emission, if you heard about the uh, scope one, scope two, and scope three, scope one is basically the uh, greenhouse gas that your company directly generate, directly generate. For example, if you are using, let's say if you are using uh, a generator set, okay, and in a generator set, then uh, you need, in order to operate the generator set, then you need to use diesel. So you burn diesel. So when you burn diesel, carbon will be emitted. So you can calculate that scope one, that is scope one. So calculate how much uh, kilogram of uh, this, carbon is being emitted from the generation of, uh, uh, from the operation of the generator set. So that's scope one, direct emission or, or direct uh, uh, generation. Scope two, scope two basically it's uh, the electricity that you use, that we use. In Malaysia, especially in peninsular Malaysia, uh, how do we generate electricity uh, is, is basically uh, in peninsular Malaysia, it's basically the burning of uh, coal, arang arang batu, uh, burning of coal in the at the at the power generation and power power plant. So when they burn coal, then uh, carbon is emitted. So uh, when you use electricity, then carbon will be emitted. So we can uh, we 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 can calculate that. We we should include that. That will be scope two. Uh, scope three is indirect emission. Indirect emission meaning, um, let's say your supplier you buy you buy raw material and then the supplier use their lorry to deliver the raw material to you. So the lorry doesn't belong to you; it belongs to the supplier. But then they deliver materials to you. So, and their lorry would be generating smokes. So that is scope three. So how much smoke are they generating? So we can we, we calculate that as well. So all this, if we are generating smoke, then uh, uh, we can uh, come out of formulas like uh, how was the distance in, in km that we we have uh, traveled, then multiply by a factor, then we get the kilogram. So we add all this together to calculate the greenhouse gas emission, add together the scope one, scope two, scope three. But just additional information, I think uh, Bosa Malaysia right now requires all public listed companies uh, to report Okay, their greenhouse gas emissions, it will become mandatory if I'm not mistaken by year uh, 2030. So, uh, but at the moment, they are focusing on scope one and two, okay, to calculate their greenhouse gas emission. So I hope I hope uh, that answers your question. Any other question, any other things that uh, you would like to ask? Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Louis. Any other question that you would like to ask? Any other things that I can share with you? No? If no question, then uh, we do appreciate your participation for today. So we would also like to provide to you a free 30 minute consultation to answer any other questions that you may think of, okay? 
uh, regarding ESG or regarding environmental health and safety. So it will be done online and we have limited slots available. So uh, if you'd like the free 30 minute consultation with us, do take out your phone, scan the QR code here to register your slot. So just uh, let you have a probably 10 seconds for you to take out your phone, scan the QR and then register your slot for a three free 30 minute consultation. Okay, um, we have an upcoming webinar as above uh, on FSSC 22,000 version six, uh, focusing on creating food safety culture plan. So the speaker will be our COO, Ms. Daniel Tan. It will be conducted, it will be held on the 6th of December, 2023, next month, 6 December uh, time, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So seats are limited, do register. How can you register? So let me just quickly paste the link into the group, into the chat. So you may register in the link that I have just posted in the group, in the chat box. So you can register using this link. So with that, that would conclude our webinar for, for today. Thank you very much for joining and we hope to see you again in the upcoming webinars. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day.